G'day folks, welcome to my channel. In this video, I wanna play you a clip where Troy Black admits, openly admits, to being a false prophet. Now, for those of you who don't know who Troy Black is, Troy Black is a YouTuber who has over 300,000 subscribers, and every week he posts videos about supposed revelations and words from God that he has received. And he's been doing this for uh, a year or so, uh, ever since he discovered that um, uh, putting on prophecies, false prophecies, will get him a lot of views. Now, I want to read to you quickly what the Bible says about a false prophet and how to identify a false prophet. If we go to Deuteronomy chapter 18, beginning at verse 20, we read this, But the prophet who shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Notice here that the way to identify a false prophet is whether or not his prophecies come to pass. And we're going to see in a moment that Troy Black's prophecies do not come to pass. Let me read you a couple more scriptures. 1 Samuel chapter 3, beginning in verse 19. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan even to Bathsheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. You notice here, the way that the people knew Samuel was a prophet was because none of his prophecies failed. All of his prophecies came to pass. Let me read to you one more scripture, Matthew chapter 7, beginning in verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you shall know them. The Bible is very clear here that we are to beware of false prophets. And it says here that we shall know them by their fruits. Now, what's the fruit of a prophet? Well, first and foremost, the fruit of a prophet is his prophecy. That's the, the fruit of a prophet, his prophecy and his teaching. And it says very clearly here that a good tree cannot bring forth bad fruit. A true prophet cannot bring forth false prophecy and a true prophet won't preach heresy. Now I'm going to play you uh, these clips of uh, Troy Black where he openly admits, by this definition, he openly admits to being a false prophet because he openly says that he doesn't always get it right. Very clear according to the Bible. That is an admission to being a false prophet. But then I want to play you some clips where he gets words from God that are clearly contrary to the word of God. He promotes false teachers and clear heretics. And I'm going to show you where he gives a clear false prophecy. I'm not going to show you many of them because they're very long-winded and it's very difficult to, to test them all, but I want to show you very clearly that he is a false prophet. Now, let's see these clips. And before I jump into this, I want to say a quick disclaimer. I am not jumping on here claiming to get everything right every single time, and the reason is because I'm still human and I am not perfect at hearing from God, and also even when I hear very clearly and accurately, I'm not perfect at sharing it and interpreting what I've heard. And that's just the nature of prof prophecy. The New Testament talks about how we see in part and we prophesy in part. I do want to say this. I know anytime someone starts talking about prophetic messages and things like that, it can raise some red flags. So I want to say this up front. I don't consider myself perfect at hearing from the Lord. Anything I share or any other prophetic person shares, take it to the Holy Spirit and pray about it. You know, because people with a prophetic gift are not perfect. I'm not perfect. Only Jesus was perfect. 
So if, here, yeah, if you ever have questions, you can confirm that something is either from God or the Holy Spirit can say, hey, they missed God on this one, you know, if they did, or they've got this right, but this detail here I want you to ignore. Um, and I encourage you, you know, everything, anything I post prophetically or anyone else online, especially, you know, um, just to pray about it, uh, take it to the Lord and uh, let the Holy Spirit either confirm or deny it, you know, because as someone who shares prophetic words, I don't claim to get everything right every single time. And sometimes I have a lot more confirmation about specific words than other times. So sometimes I'm super, super pumped about sharing it, you know, and other times I'm just listening to the Lord as best I can and relying on his grace uh, to fill in the gaps. And here's the other thing. I really encourage you um, not to just take my word for it uh, when, when I'm saying this. I encourage you personally to go to the Holy Spirit, to go to God's word and to say, God, what are you saying to me about this? Because here's the thing. If the Holy Spirit comes to you and says, no, he's wrong. Don't listen to him. Then don't listen to me, you know. But but if the Holy Spirit says, yes, there's some truth in this. Let him show you what that truth is. So, so I have this word the Lord shared with me, y'all. Um, very specific things, uh, specifically for and about the country of Russia. And I do want to say this ahead of time. I, I try to always say this. I don't claim to get everything right. I don't claim to be the mouthpiece of God or something like that. But what I'm about to share is what I hear from the Lord oftentimes in my spirit while I am praying, waiting upon the Lord and worshiping Jesus. It's interesting that he also admits that the way that God speaks to him is by giving him mental pictures and sometimes vivid mental pictures. That means he's prophesying out of his imagination. For those of y'all who are new to my stuff, new to this channel, when I get visions from the Lord, most of the time it's during worship. I'm, I'm usually laying on my face before the Lord. I'm worshiping Jesus and I'm just loving on Jesus, you know, and then oftentimes he'll give me these very vivid either. Sometimes they're just like mental pictures and other times it's, it's more of a uh, spiritual vision, you know, like sometimes it's more um, what, what I would call vivid than other times. Um, but yeah, so I saw this, this vision of these seven purple crowns. I actually started seeing this vivid image of Santa Claus. I started to see Santa Claus in a sleigh firing an arrow up over a hill. And then I knew in that moment when I saw the arrow flying that he was firing it into the future. Then I heard that song from Space Jam, the movie, um, the fly into the future song. It's like, uh, <clears throat> I want to fly like an eagle till I'm free. Fly like an eagle, let my spirit carry me. Okay, y'all had to suffer through that. The Old Testament prophets warn us again and again not to listen to the prophets who prophesy out of their own imagination. And by Troy Black's own admission, his uh, visions are really pictures in his mind or vivid pictures in his mind. That's not biblical. You won't see anybody in the Bible saying that, that they have received a vision from God, which is a vivid picture in their mind. You don't see that in scripture. Uh, uh, God said that when he speaks to a prophet, he speaks to them in a dream or in a vision. A vision is not vivid pictures in your mind. A vision is like something that you see in the book of Daniel, where everybody else ran away as Daniel had an amazing vision of the future. Troy Black is clearly not a prophet. Now, let me give you some of his false prophecies. Number one, he apparently heard a word from God where he says that God loves the unbelievers as much as the believers. In fact, he says he loves them in the same way. Watch this clip and then I'm going to prove him wrong with the Bible. And then he said, catch my passion for lost souls. I love people. I love people. And he said, the same way I love you, I love the worst of the worst. And he, he what, and I could, I had this sense that he wasn't just talking about me. He was, but he was talking to, this was a word to be shared. And he's saying that right now to you. The same way I love you, I love the worst of the worst. That is a clear false prophecy. The Bible does not say that God loves everyone in the same way. It says the opposite. For example, it says, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. God had a special love for the people of Israel that he did not have for the rest of the world. The Bible also says that God has a special love 
for his church. It says in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 21, He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. There is a special and unique love that God has for the church that he does not have for the rest of the world. It's very clear. Otherwise, this passage becomes meaningless. It says very clearly here, He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Very clear here that God has a unique love for his people that he doesn't have for the rest of the world. So God doesn't love everyone in the same way. He also promotes a heretical show like The Chosen. Let me show you this clip and let me critique it afterwards. The Lord started to speak to me very briefly about the TV show The Chosen. And this is what I heard. He said, they added some of their own opinions and ideas, but they got my heart right. So they added some of their own opinions and ideas, but they got my heart right. The second thing he said was, I'm after people who are after the heart of the Father. So he's, he's following up on this idea of them getting the heart of God right. I'm after people who are after the heart of the Father. I have a good plan for every person on this earth. Whether they find that plan or not is up to whether they discover my heart or not. That is actually false. It's a common misconception among pop Christians today. But the Bible says something very different. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 4, it says this, The Lord has made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. It's very clear here that even the wicked are made for the day of judgment. What is God's plan for the wicked? Judgment. That's what the Bible says, that God has a plan for everything even the wicked, for the day of judgment. But the first part of that prophecy was also false. They added some of their own opinions and ideas, but they got my heart right. The show The Chosen has not captured the heart of God. I encourage you to watch my video on season one and season two, a critique of The Chosen. Uh, but you need to realize, number one, The Chosen is a company that is owned by a man named Daryl Eves, who is a Mormon. Uh, Angel Studios, the producers of The Chosen, is a Mormon-owned company. Dallas Jenkins says that the Mormons are his brothers and sisters in Christ. But not only that, the man who plays Jesus is a self-confessed knight's Templar, which is a branch of Freemasonry. This is a shocking TV series that is designed to unite Christians with Catholics, Orthodox, and cults. I've learned so much more about the LDS community than I, than I thought I knew, but that goes for like the Catholic Church as well. Like this show has been uniquely, I've never seen anything like it really, how much it has unified in response multiple faith traditions. Not only that, but Troy Black has received prophecies from God supporting false teachers like Joel Osteen and Randy Clark. And then the Lord gave me this very specific word um, and the Holy Spirit just said, and this is, I'm going to explain this in this afterwards, but he said, Randy Clark is a lot happier than Joel Osteen. And then he went on, he paused and he said, because he's hearing my voice and he's seeing me move. And then he said, Joel is just trying the best he can. So I've got a lot of <laughs> explaining to do, I feel like. Joel Osteen is a known false teacher who refuses to say that Jesus and, and the gospel are the only means of salvation. But not only that, Randy Clark promotes all sorts of demonic practices in fake churches. <laughs> <laughs> Troy Black also gives prophecies saying that the Roman Catholic Church is going to be used by God. Hey y'all, this is Troy Black. So I have a prophetic word from the Lord about the Catholic Church. 
I began to see this vision of a, a uh, preserved plant inside of a display in a museum, basically like a fossil, you know, like a, like a hardened um, uh, version of, a, of, of wood of this dead plant. And it suddenly started to grow again, like it came back to life and it grew into a tree inside of this large building. And then I saw this big, beautiful tree outside with many blossoms on it. So it was as if it had been on display in this museum and then suddenly it began to grow out of this state that it was in into this living thing, you know? And then I saw it again outside with blossoms on it. It, it, In a sense, it was bearing fruit. Then I heard the Holy Spirit say this very specifically. And like I said, it's not a sweeping statement that's going to apply to every person in the Catholic Church, but I believe it's going to apply to many. So it's this is what he said. It's the Catholic Church. They're going to move in power again. That is what the Lord said. Then he said, I'm going to use them for great things. So this is a very general word, but I believe that this is a word for this season that we are in right now. It's a word for this year. It's a word for this decade. It's a word for however long of a, of a season that we are in right now, in this time in history. Could be a word for the next, you know, who knows how long, till, till Jesus returns. But this is something that God is working through the Catholic Church in order to do the same thing that he's wanting to do through every believer. He's wanting to bring people to the knowledge, the truth of Jesus Christ, a real relationship with God, forgiveness of their sins, And he is wanting to establish his kingdom on earth through his people, through the body of Christ. The teachings of the Roman Catholic Church are absolutely shocking. They're heretical. They anathematize Paul's gospel of salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Not only that, they see Mary as a co-redeemer with Christ. In addition to that, they pray to the dead saints. They bow to pictures of them and kiss them, statues and all the rest of it. They are absolutely heretical. Not only that, they believe that the uh, that the, the elements of the communion are the body and blood of Christ and the priest holds it up and bows to it and says, my Lord and my God. These people are absolute heretics. There's no way that we can say that these are God's people. Now you might say, well, maybe Troy Black meant that um, they would repent and then God would use them. The difficulty there is that is the timing he gives in this prophecy. The timing he gives at first is uh, uh, this season, then this year, and then it could be any time up until the second coming of Christ. So it's untestable. It's absolutely ridiculous. This kind of prophecy is clearly a false prophecy. But I believe that this is a word for this season that we are in right now. It's a word for this year. It's a word for this decade. It's a word for however long of a a season that we are in right now in this time in history. Could be a word for the next, you know, who knows how long till, till Jesus returns. But in addition to all of that false teaching, let me show you a prophecy which he gave regarding the 28th and 29th of September last year, where he said that those days would be important days in the history of the world. This is what I heard. September 28th and 29th are going to be an important day in the history of the world. I know this sounds like a crazy statement. This sounds like a big statement. But y'all, the Holy Spirit, (laughs) this is what he said. Watch these days, speaking of September 28th and 29th, I'm moving in new ways. And then he said, catch my passion for lost souls. I love people. I love people. And he said, the same way I love you, I love the worst of the worst. And he, what, and I could, I had this sense that he wasn't just talking about me. He was, but he was talking to, this was a word to be shared. And he's saying that right now to you. The same way I love you, I love the worst of the worst. Don't judge. Full sentence there with a period. Don't judge. And then he said, save those who are struggling. Don't judge. Save those who are struggling. So I got this impression. As soon as I heard him say, don't judge, save those who are struggling. I got this impression. It wasn't a vision, but it was an impression from the Lord of this imagery that he was communicating. It was an impression of someone struggling in water, struggling in water, like in an ocean, you know? And, th- and this is uh, 
this was the impression I got with it. You don't lecture someone who's drowning. So they might have jumped in that water themselves. They, you know, they might have been trying to kill themselves. I don't know. Or they might have been balancing on the a rail of a ship or the a rail of a or the side of a cliff or something. You know, they might have been, or they might have been swimming in water that was too rough for them. Whatever it was, you don't lecture someone who's drowning. You throw them a life preserver. You save them. <laughs> And in Jesus's case, he saw us in the water drowning. And instead of coming to judge the world, he came to save those who were lost. He jumped in the water and he saved us at his own expense. And this is what I heard specifically um, regarding that, the, the, the temptation to judge rather than point to Jesus, rather than point to salvation. I'm challenging my people to rise up and remove the restraints of the religious spirit and unbelief. He said, you won't be able to go anywhere. Uh, okay. <laughs> He's asking me to repeat that last sentence. I'm challenging my people to rise up and remove the restraints of the religious spirit and unbelief. I'm challenging my people to rise up and remove the restraints of the religious spirit and unbelief. You won't be able to go anywhere with those hanging on you. You'll be stuck. But it's time to move forward. See, God's heart is not that anyone would perish, but that everyone would come to salvation through a true belief in Jesus Christ. That's God's heart. But, and we are meant to be his vessels here on earth to proclaim the message of the gospel to those who are lost. But we can't do that if we are not free. If we're bound up, we can't throw life preservers to people. You know, or we can't jump in there and grab them. We can't reach our arm out if our hands are bound. And that's what the religious spirit does, that spirit of judgmentalism. And I'm not saying not to have discernment and to, to see the difference between right and wrong. You know, the word talks about that um, mature believers, we are going to be able to discern between right and wrong. And especially when it comes to the decisions that we are making. But it's not our job to walk around and tell everyone in this world who's doing right, who's doing wrong, and to point out all their flaws or whatever. That's the Holy Spirit's job, and he does it way better than we do. <laughs> he does it in a gentle, loving way. But it's our job to point people to Jesus, to the one who can introduce them to the Holy Spirit. That's why we're here. So he says here very clearly that God is going to move in new ways. On the 28th and 29th of September last year, God was going to move in new ways and that we are not to judge the unbelievers because God loves them in the same way that he loves us. Uh, he talked about um, uh, throwing out a, a lifesaver to people. It seems as though this is a prophecy uh, about world changing circumstances when people are going to be brought into the kingdom of God. The problem is nothing like that even remotely happened on the 28th and 29th of September. Therefore, it's a false prophecy. But he made another video, a follow-up video, desperately trying to find headlines that had nothing to do with any of that to say that this, these headlines were a fulfillment of this prophecy. Check this out. Um, these are the things that, that happened on September 28th and 29th. Number one, was, uh, and I'm just going to read headlines, lawmakers scramble to avoid government shutdown this week. One of the things that happened was a bill was passed that, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to read this so that uh, I actually get it right. Um, Senate Republicans blocked a House passed bill yesterday to suspend the debt limit and avert a government shutdown. So this was either on the 28th or the 29th. Um, there's no clear plan among lawmakers to keep government funding from running out at the end of the month. So this is a big thing, obviously, if the, if the government runs out of money, out of funds to uh, you know, continue operating. Um, and since this time, actually, and this is one of the reasons why I wait at least a week before responding to these kind of things, since this time, uh, something has been, at least a temporary bill has been passed to fund until December. This is what, it's interesting that the Lord had me talk about a passion for lost souls, loving people, not judging people, even the worst of the worst. Um, these are the things that, that happened on September 28th and 29th. Number one, 
was, uh, and I'm just going to read headlines, lawmakers scramble to avoid government shutdown this week. One of the things that happened was a bill was passed that, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to read this so that uh, uh, I actually get it right. Um, Senate Republicans blocked a House passed bill yesterday to suspend the debt limit and avert a government shutdown. So this was either on the 28th or the 29th. Um, there's no clear plan among lawmakers to keep government funding from running out at the end of the month. So this is a big thing, obviously, if the, if the government runs out of money, out of funds to uh, you know, continue operating. Um, and since this time, actually, and this is one of the reasons why I wait at least a week before responding to these kind of things, since this time, uh, something has been passed, at least a temporary bill has been passed to fund until December. This is the other thing that happened was um, there was a... <clears throat> Uh, um, I'm just going to read read this real quick. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs Gen General Mark Miley, or Milley, and U.S. Central Command Leader uh, General Franklin or Frank uh, McKenzie are all set to testify today before a Senate committee. This happened on the 28th, and it says the officials would undoubtedly face tough questions about the chaotic U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan and likely to be expected to provide more information about the Biden administration's plans for preventing Afghanistan from becoming from being a safe haven for terrorists. Uh, this is a quote, um, and this came out on, uh, I believe, September 28th, this video. Our country faces a multitude of crises. We've got an economic stagnation problem at home. We've got a raging border crisis close to home. And of course, now we have foreign policy crises around the globe. Scientists on Spain's La Palma Island are monitoring the air for toxic gases after lava from the erupted volcano reached the sea, sending acidic vapor into the air. So this is just like, in, in, my, in my thought, this is just another example of, man, it seems like crazy things are happening in the world today, you know? like. All of that is just absolutely ridiculous. None of those headlines had anything to do with the false prophecy that he gave. He was desperately searching online for things that took place that he could try to kind of piece together to say, oh, there was a fulfillment here, but it was absolute nonsense. It's very clear that Troy Black is a false prophet who gives false prophecies and you shouldn't watch him. Hope you've liked this video. If you have, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up, hit the bell notification button. I'll see you in the comment section and you'll see me in my next video.